Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss about solid design principles. Most of the videos that I have been doing in the past uses one or other solid design principles, but I have not talked in detail about all the design principles which are part of solid design principles. So I thought it would be a nice idea to walk through all of them and just talk about my philosophy around using those. So to do that, first let's understand what is solid design principles. Solid design principles are arguably the most popular design principles for object-oriented software development today. And in most cases, in modern architecture and design, solid principles are used. Solid principles, as I already mentioned, it is a set of design principles. So there are total five design principles which constitutes the solid. And the acronym came from the first letter for each of the principle. The first one is single responsibility principle. The second one is open closed principle. The third one is Liskov substitution principle. The fourth one is interface segregation principle. And the fifth one is dependency inversion principle. In my experience, out of the five design principles, four of them we probably would be using every single day. And they are single responsibility principle, open close principle, interface segregation principle, and dependency inversion principle. That doesn't mean that Liskov substitution principle is not important. It is also extremely important, but it is not applicable to all the situation. So when I get into the details, it will be much more clearer why I am saying that. So first, let's start with single responsibility principle. So what is single responsibility principle? In single responsibility principle, the concept is a class should have only one responsibility, hence only a single purpose to live. So you should never overburden a class with multiple responsibility. That's the whole purpose of single responsibility principle. And if you think about it, I have videos where I spoke about microservices and sometimes I synonym microservices with single responsibility services. It's the same principle at a service level when a service contains only one responsibility. If you boil down that into individual classes, then you are basically saying that classes should have only single responsibility. And that's the single responsibility principle. And I can see there are a few benefits of using single responsibility principle. There might be more than what I listed, but in my opinion, these few are very important. First one is given that when you implement single responsibility principle, the classes are very concise. It is extremely easier to understand and hence it is extremely easier to maintain as well because the classes don't deal with multiple things. Since the classes don't deal with multiple things, they deal with only single responsibility, the chances of it getting changed is also very less. It's because when a requirement change, not every part of application is going to change. Hence, if all the classes are single responsible, the potential that every class is going to change is extremely low. Hence, the chances of change is less frequent. And the fourth one is given the classes are small, it's easily testable and also you can test it thoroughly because you have to deal with much lesser amount of code. Now let's take a look into a real life example of what I mean by single responsibility principle. So let's say we have this order processor class and the responsibility of the class is to process an order. So what are the different part of order processing? First part will be validation. Then after it's been validated, the second part would be saving the order. And then finally, we'll have to notify the customers that the order has been successfully executed. Hence notification. So if we have to achieve that, what we can do is we can create a public void validate, which validates the order. Then we can have public void save for saving the order. I'm just taking string because I don't want to create an order object right now. It's not necessary for explaining the 
single responsibility principle but you can understand here it will be an order object that will be taking and then finally we are going to have public void send notification now here essentially if you look at the order processor right now it is doing too many things it is validating the order it is saving the order and it is sending a notification so if you want to implement single responsibility principle what you are going to do is you are going to have a class called order validator which is going to have the method validate and then we are going to have a class of order saver let's say and it will have the responsibility of saving the order and then finally I'm just going to squeeze in these classes we're going to have a public class order notification sender which is responsible for sending the notification so now what we have done is we have broken down the order processor class into three single responsibility classes and each one is responsible for a very specific thing one is for validation second one is for saving the order and third one is for sending notification and then the processor can have just one public void process where inside the process it is going to take the object of these three classes and call them so we can have a constructor here which takes order validator then order saver and finally order notification sender and we can create fields for all the three and then finally here we can do fast order validator dot validate then order saver dot save and then finally order notification sender dot send notification Save or take something. So I'm just passing off. So this is how we can break this class into three single responsibility services, and then processor is just orchestrating the single responsibility classes and calling their individual method to achieve a functionality. And now it becomes, if you look back into the benefits, you can see that all the benefits are kind of very evident from the example. So that's our single responsibility principle. The next one is open closed principle. Open closed principle says that a class should be open for extension but closed for modification. So what are the benefits of open closed principle? By not allowing modification provides the advantage of not introducing bugs. Because if you are not allowing modification, then the existing code is not going to have bugs. The chances of introducing bugs is going to be significantly low. And the second point is all dependent classes will not have to adapt to the modification. So that's basically, in my opinion, are the fundamental benefits of open closed principle. In an essence, if you are, if you think about it, if you are using an interface, you are using open closed principle. Let me explain how through an example. So now let's take this example. We have this order saver, which saves order. Now, if the requirement comes there, well, the order saver has to save the order to the database as well as into a cache for faster access. So now you can do this. You can go ahead and create a public void save cache now now you can see cache now you can see 
how by modifying the existing type introducing a new method what are the pain we are introducing so you can see now we modified which means that the save cache and save we modified this class now in future if we have to save into another place let's say a distributed database like mongo or cassandra now we have to introduce new method as you can see that this class started getting really messy and it will start becoming really big and also it is going to break into the single responsibility principle not in terms of functionality but in terms of technical aspects so how we can solve this so we can solve this through open closed design principle which is basically we keep it closed for modification but open it up for extension so if i have an interface called i order service and if i declare I order service interface here which has void save then what is going to happen is here the order saver can be DB order saver and similarly we can have another class called cache order saver So right here we have now ability to extend the interface with multiple implementation and not modify the existing type. So that gives you open close. And here of course now we are going to take I order saver and we are going to call save. And if we want to save in multiple databases, we are just going to take an array and call save on the array instead of just a single save here. So we're going to have and we can say item.save just passing null right now but you get the idea. So that's open close design principle. Next one is Liskov substitution principle. So Liskov's substitution principle states that a subclass should be substitutable by its base class without having any negative impact on the caller. So what are the benefits of Liskov's substitution principle? Well, the caller does not get surprising behavior when substitution is applied. And I think it's very critical. And also complex bug which might have happened due to conflicting behavior between the inheritance is easily avoided. If we want to look into an example of Liskov substitution principle. So let us consider we have a let's create a class and let's create a bot class. If we provide a class called bird and if we provide an implementation called fly. What is going to happen is if we declare another class and we call it ostrich which extend bird. Now if someone is taking bird and using fly and you substitute bird with ostrich the fly in ostrich doesn't make any sense because ostrich doesn't fly. So this is a wrong type of implementation. This is where the Liskov substitution principle is broken. So how do we do that? We declare bird as bird and then we can have another class called flying bird and which inherits from bird and flying bird can have public word fly. And now the ostrich can derive from bird, whereas from something like pigeon can derive from flying bird. And now if you are going with bird, then what happens is if you are passing ostrich, it's a good behavior. And then if you are passing a flying bird, and if you exchange this with pigeon, you are having a good behavior. 
So that's what Liskov substitution principle is. And as I was mentioning earlier, this is not something you will have to deal with every day. We don't come across this kind of scenario in day-to-day -day problems that we solve. Of course, there are situations where we'll get into it, but not as frequent as every other design principles that we'll have to use. The next one is interface segregation. And interface segregation principle is all about separating interfaces. Basically, multiple specific interfaces are better than one generic, gigantic, single interface. That's what interface segregation is all about. The benefit of interface segregation is, of course, all the benefits are kind of same as single responsibility principle because if you segregate the interface you will end up having more chances of having single responsibility and also the classes which implement the interfaces are going to become much more smaller and also there are certain times if you have an interface with five methods and one class really needs just four you end up having an interface which doesn't have an implementation and creates all kind of bad behavior so you either don't return anything from it or throw an exception it's just ugly so interface segregation in my opinion is very critical and as I mentioned, it works it kind of, it's not a benefit, but it kinds of work hand in hand with single responsibility principle. Now, if I want to show an example of interface segregation, let me go back to the code. Now, let's get back to our order processor example. So we discussed about saving order in I save order. Now order also needs to be deleted. And we also need to select order. So let's say I have a delete and read. Now, as you can see, this DV order saver will end up having three methods. So is this cache order saver. And before we know, first of all, we have a lot of code. And secondly, we are kind of breaking the single responsibility principle because now the order saver cannot be order saver. It's going to be an order DB manager or something like that, which end up having three or four methods. So instead, we'll have an order saver, which has just save an order reader which is read and order deleter which is delete so instead of having a i order saver which has all the three method we're going to have something like so we have a i order deleter and then finally we'll have I order reader. So you just break this into three and then the order saver will just have save. It doesn't have to deal with delete and read anymore. There will be other classes which implement. So interface segregation is another design principle which I follow very religiously because I find it to create much more smaller code which becomes easier to read as well as maintain. And last but not the least is dependency inversion principle. So what does dependency inversion principle says? According to dependency inversion principles, classes should depend only on contracts, meaning interfaces or abstract class rather than concrete implementation. And this is something you have seen me doing again and again. And as you can see, this is very closely related to open close principle because open close principle is implementing interfaces essentially. And then dependency inversion is saying that the dependencies has to be always interfaces, which kind of makes sense. Now, if we have to show this example, basically go back to the same order. And here, as you can see, for order validation and order notification, we are still taking classes instead of that what it is saying is that we should implement interface for both of these and then have interfaces pass to the classes so that we have a dependency inversion instead of expecting a appropriate type we just accept a contract and I have spoken multiple times the benefit of doing that of course one of the benefit is you can decide what implementation you pass Secondly, when it comes to unit testing, it becomes extremely easy to test because since you depend on interfaces rather than concrete classes, you can always mock and have mock implementation and do unit testing really well. 
So these are the five design principles which are part of solid design principles. And this is all I wanted to cover today. I hope I covered everything. But if you have any questions or you need any clarification, please leave me a comment below and I'll respond to it with best of my knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.